Hey, welcome to the preparatory ground instruction for exercise 15 in the flight training manual, which covers slips. So what is a slip? A slip is when the aircraft is in a banked attitude, but its tendency to turn is being impeded by the rudder. We often use the term cross control to describe the configuration of a slip. This means that rather than coordinating the use of the rudder and the ailerons, we use opposite rudder input to aileron input. So for example, I turn the yoke to the left, but then I apply right rudder. In the lesson on turns, we looked at slipping and skidding turns. In a coordinated turn, an adequate amount of rudder is applied to keep the body of the aircraft in line with the turn. In a slipping turn, the rudder is either not applied at all or applied opposite to aileron input, causing the nose to slip to the outside of the turn. This creates a lot of drag and is the main reason why slips are used to shed excess energy, and it can be problematic when slipping to fight a crosswind. So that leads us to the why. Why do we slip? Two main reasons. One is to maintain directional control while landing in a crosswind, and the other is to lose altitude without gaining airspeed, such as in a forward slip. The image on the left shows the forward slip. As you can see, the aircraft fuselage is exposed to the flight path, and it creates a lot of drag. We teach forward slips so that you know how to do this maneuver. However, a forward slip should only be used when necessary, such as in an engine out forced approach. The image on the right shows a side slip, which is one way to counteract a crosswind. The idea is to bank the aircraft into the wind, but use the rudder to keep the nose in the direction of the flight path and prevent the aircraft from turning. Both types of slip involve cross-controlling. However, the way in which they are executed is different. So let's go into more detail. Let's start out by looking at the forward slip. To execute a forward slip, start from straight and level flight at a safe altitude. First, remove power then offset your heading either to the left or to the right, and then apply full opposite rudder. Push forward on the yoke to prevent the nose from popping up and maintain these inputs until desired altitude loss has been achieved. To recover, simply simultaneously release all three inputs. So a few very important notes about forward slips. The sole purpose of this maneuver is to lose energy by maximizing the amount of drag on the airplane. Because you are trying to shed energy, it makes no sense to carry additional energy into this maneuver. So before attempting a forward slip, always remove power. Next, to ensure that you're achieving maximum results for your efforts, I usually say go for gold. Give full rudder and sufficient aileron and forward pressure to maintain your forward flight path. It's going to feel weird and that's a good thing. Last is to be cognizant of which direction you choose to slip. A left forward slip is going to give you better forward visibility, but a right forward slip will not affect the airspeed indicator as much as a left forward slip will. Before we move on, I just want to mention the slipping turn. This maneuver is the same as a forward slip, only it includes bank if required. Because the intent of the slipping turn is to lose altitude, then this maneuver should be done with the power off, and also you must pitch forward to overcome the increase in drag and maintain airspeed. Okay, now let's look at the side slip. To execute a side slip, offset the heading first by turning the aircraft into the wind, and then apply opposite rudder to compensate. Check forward on the controls to make sure that the nose does not rise, and maintain these inputs as long as needed or even up until landing. Remember that a slip is gonna cause additional drag on the aircraft. So in the event of a side slip, if you wanna maintain your descent path, you might need to even maintain or add more power and control is necessary. Unlike a forward slip, the side slip will have inputs that are adjusted to the situation or the intensity of the wind. In the event of gusty wind, you'll probably need to continually adjust your inputs all the way down to the ground. Two important safety notes on slipping. Train yourself to pitch forward whenever you attempt a slip maneuver to overcome the drag and the tendency of the nose to pop up. Also, do not fly cross-controlled in a climb. Remember that any slipping maneuver will take away any energy that you have, and in a climb, you want all of that energy to take you into the climb. So it doesn't make any sense to do any kind of slipping maneuver in a climb. And that's it. So here are some review questions for you. And as always, if you do have any additional questions, just bring them with you to your lesson. Have a great day.